This could be when hydrogen finally breaks free from the lab and into our everyday lives. It was pitched as the future of clean energy for decades, yet it always seemed just out of reach. Promises were made, prototypes unveiled, and still, hydrogen lagged. But now, something's shifting. New tech is surfacing, sleeker, smarter, and possibly cheaper. What if we're finally cracking the code to make green hydrogen scalable, affordable, and efficient? Could this be the breakthrough we've been waiting for? This video delves deep into the race for better hydrogen and the science that just might win it. The problem with hydrogen. Hydrogen is everywhere. It's the most abundant element in the universe. But unlocking its energy isn't as simple as scooping it out of the air. It clings to other elements, like oxygen in water or carbon in fossil fuels. That clinginess is a big problem. To extract hydrogen, you need energy, a lot of it. And more often than not, you use more energy to produce hydrogen than the hydrogen gives back. That's the catch. We classify hydrogen production into colors. Gray hydrogen comes from fossil fuels, blue includes carbon capture, and green comes from renewables. Naturally, green is what the world is aiming for, but it's not easy. Electrolyzers are expensive and energy-hungry machines that split water into hydrogen and oxygen. Most hydrogen today still comes from natural gas, not solar or wind. That's why hydrogen is often criticized. It's clean when used, but dirty when made. Batteries beat it in cars, and wind or solar do better in homes. Hydrogen's inefficiency holds it back. But recently, some innovations have emerged that could finally push it forward. And one of them is surprisingly simple. Chasing clean hydrogen. Green hydrogen has always been the dream. Imagine splitting water using solar or wind power and getting only pure hydrogen and oxygen without pollution or a carbon footprint. But turning that into reality has been a long, uphill battle. Electrolyzers, the core of this process, have remained bulky, expensive, and painfully inefficient. The kind most used today, PEM, or Proton Exchange Membrane Electrolyzers, work, but not without a cost. They demand rare, costly metals and still lose significant energy as heat or gas leaks. And that's another challenge. Hydrogen, being the tiniest element, slips through the tiniest holes. Storing and transporting it without loss is a nightmare even after it's produced. This energy bleeding makes every stage, from generation to storage to end use, less efficient than we'd like. Despite its promise, green hydrogen still struggles to compete with other renewables. Wind and solar go directly to the grid, and batteries store power more reliably. Hydrogen sits on the sidelines, waiting for its moment. Still, engineers and researchers haven't given up. We might tip the scales if we can fix just one part of the process and make it cheaper or more efficient. That's where Hisata enters. Hisata's bubble-free breakthrough. In a world of flashy tech, Hisata's solution feels almost too simple to be true. But sometimes, genius lies in simplicity. The Australian startup looked at electrolyzers and asked a basic question. What's causing all the waste? Their answer wasn't material, it wasn't a chemical, it was bubbles. During electrolysis, bubbles of gas form on the electrodes. These bubbles block the electrode surface, stopping the current from flowing smoothly, which reduces efficiency. Hisata's idea? Remove the bubbles from the equation. Their capillary-fed electrolyzer redesigns how water meets electricity. Instead of immersing electrodes in liquid, it lets water slowly rise through a special separator by capillary action, like water climbing up a paper towel. This separator allows just the right amount of water to reach the electrode. No flooding, no bubbles. The result is stunning. Without those gas bubbles in the way, reactions happen more freely. According to Hisanta's peer-reviewed studies, this system achieves up to 98% efficiency, that's a leap beyond even the best commercial electrolyzers today, and it doesn't stop there. Their design uses fewer parts, less cooling, and could scale to massive production by 2025. Suddenly, hydrogen doesn't look so stuck. A new kind of flow. 
Hisata's innovation lies in rethinking how water flows inside an electrolyzer. Instead of drenching the electrodes in liquid, their design lets water slowly rise through a porous membrane using capillary action, like a sponge drawing up water. This subtle shift makes a big difference. Water only reaches one electrode, which prevents bubbles from forming and blocking the reaction surface. With fewer bubbles, the electrochemical process becomes smoother and more efficient. What's remarkable is how much equipment this eliminates. Traditional systems need pumps, circulation units, gas separators, and other components that drive up cost and maintenance. Hisata's method avoids all that. It runs without moving parts. Even cooling is handled passively, using simple air instead of liquid systems. The result is a lean, efficient setup that produces more hydrogen with less energy and complexity. And it's not just a clever lab experiment. Hisata believes this system can scale rapidly and cheaply. If they're right, this could be the upgrade green hydrogen has been waiting for. The Korean Alternative While Hisata focuses on simplicity, researchers in South Korea tackle a different problem – materials. A new membrane could change how we build electrolyzers at the Korean Institute of Science and Technology. Traditional PM systems rely on rare, expensive metals like platinum and iridium. These are effective but cost a fortune. The KIST team tested a new AEM, or anion exchange membrane, that works under alkaline conditions and avoids costly catalysts altogether. The innovation lies in a special polymer with high ion conductivity. It boosts performance by increasing the internal surface area and reducing resistance. It outperformed standard AEM sixfold in tests and even beat some PEMs by 20%. That's massive. But there's a catch, longevity. While PMs last tens of thousands of hours, this AEM still falls behind in lifespan. Still with lower costs and decent efficiency, this could fill important roles in the green hydrogen space, especially where replacing parts is cheaper than using precious metals. Efficiency on trial. Efficiency is where dreams become reality or crash. Hisata's system uses just 41.5 kilowatt hours to produce one kilogram of hydrogen compared to traditional systems using over 50. That's a 95% efficiency rating for Hisata versus 75% for industry standards. These numbers aren't just marketing. They're peer-reviewed and backed by real lab work. Every percentage point counts. Even small improvements in hydrogen can mean millions of dollars saved over time. And it's not just about the raw energy cost. By reducing the need for heavy equipment, pumps, separators, and complex plumbing, Hisata's model saves money on every front. Meanwhile, KIST's membrane solution, though not as efficient in the long term, may bring immediate savings in places where frequent replacement is possible. These innovations tackle different parts of the same puzzle. One is refining how we split water, and the other is changing what we build the system with. Together, they're shifting the conversation from is hydrogen viable to how soon can we scale it? The race to scale. Innovation is only part of the equation. Scaling is the real challenge. Hisada says its electrolyzers will hit gigawatt scale production by 2025. That's ambitious, but its design helps. There is no need for cooling liquids, fewer parts, and simpler manufacturing. It's lean engineering. If they pull it off, hydrogen's price could drop from today's $11 per kilogram to just $1.50. KIST's breakthrough isn't far behind. Their AEM design could apply to more than hydrogen, fuel cells, carbon capture, and even ammonia-based power. It's a flexible piece in the green energy machine. But both technologies face hurdles. Mass production takes money, time, and trust. Industries need to believe this tech works outside the lab, in harsh, real-world environments. That's where government support and private investment come in. Still, there's a sense that something's changing. Costs are already dropping, and green hydrogen is shedding its old limitations. The market is preparing. These breakthroughs could be the final push it needs. What comes next? Hydrogen's future hinges on more than one invention. It needs a wave of efficient, scalable, durable, and cheap inventions. 
Heseta offers a sleek, high-performance system with minimal losses. KISS delivers a lower-cost, adaptable alternative. Both are necessary. Together, they attack the two biggest problems, how to make and afford hydrogen. But we're still in the early days. These aren't yet household names or global products. They need testing, funding, and partners. Infrastructure must evolve, too. Pipes, tanks, and fueling stations must all adapt to handle this volatile but promising fuel. The bright side? Trends are positive. Green hydrogen is on a downward cost curve. Every few years, prices drop dramatically. And with countries setting ambitious climate goals, the demand for clean energy is only growing. Hydrogen might not replace everything. But as part of a diverse energy mix, alongside solar, wind, and batteries, it could be exactly what the world needs. The science is catching up. The rest is just time. This isn't just a story about better machines. It's a story about momentum. After years of falling short, hydrogen is inching closer to the promise it's always held. New designs, smarter materials, and bold ambitions breathe fresh energy into the field. Hisata and KIST are just the beginning. The breakthroughs we're seeing today could become the building blocks of a cleaner tomorrow, but it's not guaranteed. These systems must prove themselves, survive scaling, and win over skeptics. The road ahead is steep, but it finally feels like we're moving. Hydrogen's time may truly be approaching.